Hey guys, how's it going today? I'm going to be showing you how to replace your front and back arm on the Mavic Air. So the first thing you want to do when making this repair is remove the two screws by the gimbal which are holding on the top plate. So these are going to be small Phillips head screws and sometimes they'll have a little bit of glue over them. Uh, keep in mind this does void your warranty so after you remove that glue this is what the screw is going to be looking like. It's a small little black screw. Once you have that screw removed, well, both of those screws, you're going to come to the back of the drone and start to remove the top plate. I'd recommend using either a little plastic crowbar or um, some sort of small thin object you can get under there and pop it off with. So once you have it off, you're going to see these black screws. Um, you still have to get the back plate off though. So doing this, I would recommend using the same tool you did to get the very first top plate off. Uh, be careful with this one because this one tends to kink when removing it So it's held on by some glue and again like these plastic clips that DJI loves to use So just slowly break away at that glue from the back and then you should be able to eventually Get it all out as you can see there's quite a bit um, And then you do have to pry quite hard So once you get that off you're gonna be exposed to the top plate screws and there is I believe eight of them so four in the front and four in the back so we're gonna go ahead and remove those I'd recommend having a plastic tray or some sort of silicone work mat like I have uh, it really comes in handy when you're doing these repairs and it makes it less of a headache so take that top plate off and now we're exposed to the flight controller the processor fan and the top of the gimbal so make sure you don't lose your SD card and Type-C connector uh, protector. <laughs> so yeah, don't lose that. Put that aside. So now we're going to start removing the gimbal ribbon cable fastener, I guess you could call it. So it's a little just metal bracket that they have covering them to make sure they stay locked in place. So there's going to be three screws, or actually four screws, my mistake, three black and then one silver. Uh, to remove this fan, it's usually glued down, so I would use that tool again, something thin, get under it and pop it up. Be careful though, there are very thin wires that are connected to the flight controller. Also when you're pulling it up, make sure you don't pull the heat sink off of that component right there. So I missed that one silver screw, so let me just take that one out. Alright, so once you remove that, you're going to be able to see the four ribbon cables connected to the main board. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the four up front. So there's going to be one connected there, another small one right beside it, um, a larger one. And be careful with this larger one. There are two metal brackets that are kind of fragile. So if you break them, you will not be able to get this back on. So keep that in mind. Be very gentle with that one. And go ahead and pop that last one off. So once we get those four up front, move both of these antennas. And again, just be careful with them. It's fairly fragile stuff we're working with so go ahead and remove those and once you got those off we're going to come up to the back of the drone now and you're going to see this gold plate uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove this there's two black screws holding it in place and so yeah you're going to go ahead and remove those now all right so we'll remove that first ribbon cable holding those two down and then go ahead and remove the other two so it goes top left right or top right left either way you want to do it so once you have those removed there's going to be one more ribbon cable covered up with a little bracket that's kind of hidden if you aren't looking for it so we're going to go home we're going to go ahead and remove that one now that's held in with one black screw so again i would recommend having some sort of mat or tray to hold all of these screws and components um, i spaced it in this video but we are going to actually realize we can't pull the flight controller out because there is still a ribbon cable connected. Oh yeah, so there we go. Oopsie, I forgot to disconnect that one, so there we go. Disconnected it, now you can take out the entire flight controller and fan. So now we have access to the ESCs and this is where we're going to desolder the motor wires and remove the arms. Alright guys, so to begin removing these motor wires, you're going to have to pick off this liquid electrical tape that DJI likes to put on the solder joints. So once you have that removed, you can actually desolder the motor wires 
and then move down to the LED wires and start desoldering those. The LED wires are tiny. The wire themselves is tiny, so be careful when you're desoldering those. Uh, and the pads themselves are also tiny, so be careful to not rip those off the board. If you're fairly inexperienced with soldering, I wouldn't recommend this repair. Um, I'd maybe recommend sending this to a repair shop and letting them try it out. And uh, maybe working on your skills a little bit and then attempting it. Uh, it's not too complicated, but if you're not steady with the iron, you can bridge pads and that leads to disasters with people who don't know how to solder. Um, so to remove the arm brackets, which are which is actually holding the pivot point of the arm in place, you're going to have to remove the top and bottom one. So to remove the bottom one, it's actually hidden by two pieces. So that first piece is that little plastic piece. And you're going to have to just snap that out of place and then remove these two Phillips screws right there. So once you have those two Phillips screws removed, you can just move that piece out of place. And then you'll see the white arm bracket that is actually held in place with one screw. So we're going to go ahead and remove that screw so we can take this arm bracket out and actually get the whole unit of the arm out and put our new replacement arm in. So once you have the bottom one out, we're going to flip the drone over to the top and you're going to see this black arm bracket. That's how you know white is the bottom, black is the top. Um, so the black is held in with two black screws. So go ahead and remove both of those. And when removing these, I'd recommend applying the force straight up because you don't want to bend them or misshape the actual bracket. So set these aside and now bring in your new arm and begin to place that into the frame. When running these wires into the frame, it's uh, fairly simple. There's just one big port, and then you just kind of pop them up on top of the ESC board. And, uh, just make sure they all come through and none get stuck on the bottom of the board. And then to place this top arm bracket in, um, I'd recommend actually closing, closing the arm completely. Here I just situate the wires to make sure they don't fall back through into the frame. Um, so yeah, to get this first arm bracket in or the top arm bracket in the black one uh, go ahead and close the arm pretty much completely and then line the bracket up and then you can push straight down and then go ahead and screw it in place so it doesn't pop out on you so now that we have the top one in we're gonna move over to the bottom and we're gonna now place this one in and again the bottom is the white bracket so get ahead so the white bracket can sometimes be a pain so I would recommend getting it lined up and then um, you can even move the arm in different positions to line it up and go ahead and line that one up and pop it into place and screw it into place. So once you have both those screwed down, go ahead and start applying some solder to the motor wire pads because we're going to get this arm fully installed before we move on to the back arm. Um, I would recommend always adding some new solder to anything you're going to solder because you don't want any cold solder, you know, no, you know, it's always always good. So go ahead and solder these motor wires down. Um, I'll have a little picture right here for you guys so you can see what uh, what wires go where. Uh, they are labeled though um, and you can also just take a picture you know before attempting it so you have a reference to go back to. And I'll also have a picture here to so you know where to solder your motor wire uh, your LED wires. So again the LED wires are tiny so when soldering them, just be careful you don't want to bridge any pads. They are relatively well spaced out. So. so once you have those done, you're going to have to attach the antenna to the ESC board. Ooh, I guess I didn't show that in this video. Um, I get So to remove the back arm, there's two hex screws. So there's one on the bottom and then one on the top of the arm. So to do it have the arm closed to remove one and have the arm open to remove the other and then you can go ahead and pull that out uh, so go ahead and bring your back arm in and to slide it into place just make sure your wires aren't getting kinked again you don't want that to happen you don't want to rip anything anything brand new that would suck All 
All right, so once you have that in, uh, go ahead and put those hex screws back in. Uh, so open the arm up to put the one in, and then go ahead and close it to put the other in. There you go, your arm's in place. And then here's another diagram right here for you guys to uh, go ahead and see where these wires go. But again, they are labeled on the flight controller. And again, you can just take a picture of your own flight controller before doing this so you have a reference to go back to. So go ahead and solder those into place. And there we go. So those are done. Uh, so go ahead and now move out of, eh, Jesus, speak English, Jack. Go ahead and move all of the ribbon cables out of the way of the flight controller and uh, actually bring the flight controller into place and seat it down. Uh, you can go ahead and put a couple of those screws into place to hold it down. Um, I'm going to begin to just place all the ribbon cables back where they go. Um, be careful if you're using a screwdriver. Don't apply too much force. You don't want to bend the little pins. Uh, make sure it's 100% in place before actually applying full pressure. So once you have the ribbon cables installed, go ahead and place these antennas uh, where they go. The one antenna is actually ran between these two circuit boards and then placed right there. Um, so once you have those all installed, make sure they are seated into the frame and not out in the way of anything. So once those are done, before placing the fan down, you're going to want to actually put this bracket down. So this bracket, I would like. I would always recommend having designated spots to put all of these uh, parts with the screws that they came with. So this fan is held in with glue. Most of the time you can get away with just putting it back down and the adhesive that was on there will actually restick with the heat that the processor makes. So it's pretty cool. Uh, sometimes if you do, if you have to repair it multiple and multiple and multiple times, uh, maybe that adhesive won't hold, but if it's a one time repair, that adhesive should stick again. Um, so I would go ahead and now start to place the other the ribbon cable on the left side of the craft and that small little bracket so go ahead and put that in place and then install that small bracket so once you have that in place it's kind of a pain sometimes once you have that in place we can move to the back of the craft and to begin to place these three ribbon cables down So once you have those three installed, we're going to grab that gold bracket that makes sure they stay locked in place and install that. Um, I, you do not want to forget these brackets because that could only lead to trouble during flights. If there's turbulence during your flight, you don't want any of your instruments or components coming unplugged. And that's what these brackets are there to do. All right, so we're pretty much done here. So once you have all those ribbon cables and brackets installed, you can go ahead and put your top plate back on and begin to screw all the screws back in. Again, there's 10 total. So once you have the top plate installed, you can begin to put the top back plate on. And my camera fell here. And then you can start to put on the very first top, top front plate, whatever the hell you want to call them. There's a lot of these things. Um, and then you want to install this the two Phillips screws that lock that top front plate on and once you have those installed I actually forgot to show me installing the front arm under bracket cover so I went ahead and just showed you guys here for reference just pop that first thing in and there put the two Phillips screws on and then go ahead and snap the protective cover over that make sure you put your prop uh, your prop blocking mechanism on your motors and you are all set to go make sure you're spinning the right direction you're not getting any errors 
and happy flying i hope this helped you guys and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below sorry this video dragged on for so long i just wanted to make sure i covered everything see you in the next one